incredible leaders in the military, and we have incredible military, and we are very proud of them. And this was another very, very successful mission. At 7 p.m. local time, the U.S. military dropped what's known as the mother of all bombs on ISIS targets in the Afghan province of Nangarhar. The 21,600-pound GPS-guided bomb is America's largest non-nuclear bomb. The GBU-43 is a large, powerful, and accurately delivered weapon. We targeted a system of tunnels and caves that ISIS fighters used uh, to move around freely, making it easier for them to target U.S. military advisors and Afghan forces in the area. The White House says the military took all necessary precautions to prevent civilian casualties and is currently assessing the damage. This is the first time this bomb has been used on the battlefield. It was developed during the Iraq war. The United States takes the fight against ISIS very seriously, and in order to defeat the group, we must deny them operational space, which we did. This is a major military move in what President Trump has called one of his top priorities, defeating ISIS. A statement by General John Nicholson, the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, said ISIS has been using IEDs, bunkers, and tunnels to solidify its defenses, and this attack will boost the U.S. offense against them. In Washington, I'm Steve Mandis reporting.
our impression that the West, mainly the United States, is hand in glove with the terrorists. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. It wasn't attack because of what happened in Khan Shekhun. It's one event, it's a stage one, the play that we saw on the social networking and on TVs, uh, the propaganda, and the stage two is the military uh, attack. That's what we believe is happening because it's only few uh, few days, two days, 48 hours between uh, the play and the attacks and no investigations, uh, no uh, concrete evidence about anything. The only thing were allegations and propaganda and then strike. The United States and the West, they're not serious in fighting the terrorists and yesterday some of their statements were defending ISIS they were saying that ISIS doesn't have chemical weapons. They are defending ISIS against the Syrian government and the Syrian army. Uh, so actually, you cannot talk about partnership between us who work against the terrorists and who fight the terrorism and the others who are supporting explicitly the terrorists. Actually, uh, no one has investigated what happened that day in Khan uh, Sheikh until that moment. Uh, as you know, Khan Sheikh is under the control of uh, Al Nusra Front, which is a branch of Al Qaeda. So the only information the world uh, have had till this moment is uh, by, uh, published by Al Qaeda branch. Uh, no one has any other information. We don't know if the whole pictures uh, or video that we've been seeing are true or fabricated. That's why we asked for. Uh, investigation to what happened in Khan Shikhun. This is the second Al-Qaeda sources say that the attack happened at 6, 6.30 in the morning, while the Syrian attack in the same area was at uh, around noon, between 11.30 to 12. So it's, uh, they're talking about two different uh, stories or uh, events. So there was no order to uh, make any attack. We don't have any chemical weapons. We gave up our arsenals a few years ago. Even if we have them, we wouldn't use them, and we had never used our uh, chemical uh, arsenal in our history. Both in his bilateral meeting, but also in his uh, meeting with, uh, sorry, both in, his, in his bilateral meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, but also in his uh, bilat with President Putin, uh, um, there was, uh, I think, uh, an acknowledgement uh, that uh, there are uh, almost historic low level of trust, uh, 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 levels of trust uh, between uh, our two countries. 
And I think Secretary Tillerson said right out of the bat in his press avail yesterday, that's a problem. Um, I think it is certainly in his meeting with President Putin, um, they went over uh, the history of why we're, at, why we're where we're at. Um, and I think it allowed the two of them to uh, both appreciate and better understand uh, why uh, each country is uh, frustrated uh, with the other on certain issues. Um, and I think by the end of that, they were able to acknowledge that uh, with this understanding in place, there's a way for um, the two countries to find ways to rebuild uh, some of that trust, find opportunities. Um, and with that respect, I think that's, you know, the idea of this working group is to look at uh, look for those opportunities uh, or ways to kind of rebuild so it's a trust. Singular. Fantastic. Thank you. How are you? Fine, sir. We're going to go around and introduce ourselves, okay? We'll do this first. You know these folks back here, they're very famous, most of them. It's called the media. <laughs> <laughs> they're very honorable people. But you're more honorable, I can tell you that. Well, thank you, sir.
تنها دو روز مانده به رفراندوم سرنویساز در ترکیه رهبران حزب ادالت و توسعه شاید نه چندان به روشنی اما با خط و نشان کشیدن های معنادار به نوعی از پیروزی خود در این رفراندوم میگویند اگرچه هنوز هیچ کس به درستی نمیداند که نتیجه این همه پرسی چه خواهد شد رقابت نزدیک مخالفان و موافقان پیش بینی را برای همه دشوار کرده اما به مدد رسانه ها و توان تبلیغاتی پرشمار موافقان رفراندوم باید تا حدودی سنگینی کف ترازو را به نفع موافقان دید با این همه آخرین نظرسنجی ها طبیعتا با وسواس از سوی افکار عمومی دنبال می شود مؤسسه نظرسنجی آنار در آخرین و تازه ترین نظرسنجیش می گوید شرایط به کام دولت و موافقان رفراندوم هست پیش بینی 52 درصد رأی آری در مقابل 48 درصد رأی نه مانند هر رقابت نزدیکی این آرای خاکستری هستند که در نهایت می توانند نتیجه را ورای همه این نظرسنجی ها تغییر دهند این آرای خاکستری یا افرادی که هنوز مردد به آری یا خیر گفتن هستند حکم برگ برنده برای دو گروه را دارد باید منتظر ماند تا روز یک شنبه اما از همه اینها گذشته بیش از هر کس دیگری آنکه دل توی دلش نیست کسی نیست جز رجب طیب اروغان خبرگزاری دولتی آناتولی هم اعلام کرده که نتایج رفراندوم به صورت زنده از این خبرگزاری در دسترس عموم قرار خواهد گرفت روزنامه ملیت از قول آقای اروغان می نویسد در سیستم ریاستی جدید نظام ایالتی نخواهیم داشت روزنامه خبر ترک هم از قول قلیشدار اغلو رهبر حزب مخالف جمهوری خلق می نویسد در سیستم جدید دموکراسی وجود نخواهد داشت روزنامه سبا هم مدعی است اگر آری در رفراندوم رای بیاورد ارزش لیر ترکیه بالا می رود و البته استناد می کند به گفته های بانک یو بی اس سوئد یعنی شفق می نویسد با اروپا بعد از 16 آپریل بر سر میز مذاکره می نشینیم اما دورتر از خبرهای رفراندوم آقای اردوغان روز گذشته گفتگوی تلفنی مفصلی داشت با ولادیمیر پوتین رئیس جمهور روسیه ترکیه میل دارد در مورد حمله شیمیایی دو هفته پیش در سوریه تحقیقات بین المللی صورت بگیرد رؤسای جمهور دو کشور همچنین بر ضرورت تداوم آتش بس در سوریه و مذاکرات آستانه و ژنو تاکید داشتند مولود شاووشغلو وزیر خارجه ترکیه میگوید ما پس از رفراندوم آخرین پیشنهادمان را به اتحادیه اروپا در زمینه لغو روادید برای شهروندان ترکیه می دهیم و هر تصمیمی پس از آن گرفتیم مردم را در جریان آن قرار می دهیم ترکیه می گوید اگر اتحادیه اروپا در این زمینه تعلل کند آنگاه این کشور نیز خود را ملزم به پایبندی به قرارداد استرداد مهاجران نمی داند. روزنامه ملیت هم همین سخنان چابوشغلو را باستاب داده و می نویسد آخرین پیشنهاد برای عضویت در اتحادیه اروپا بعد از رفراندوم 16 آپریل